Hey there, this is Dave Conklin from Conklin Media, and welcome. I am so excited that you're here. Um, well, I'm excited that people are here because I obviously don't actually know who you are directly, um, but I am really excited to share some of the things that I have learned over the past 20 years almost of doing digital marketing. We're going to be talking today about how to increase profits for your business utilizing something that we call microsites. Now, microsites are kind of different the way we describe them than how you might look them up on the web and, and read about microsites and things, but I'm going to talk to you and actually show you real examples about how a lot of different companies like these are using microsites to just catapult their businesses. Now, you'll notice on here we've got companies that are B2C that sell things like memory cards through e-commerce platforms. We've got B2B sites. There's real estate agency sites, construction industry, manufacturing, um, services, products, the whole deal. So there are, this is literally endless. We've seen in 18 years of, of business growth, we have seen almost every kind of company utilizing the skills that we're going to talk about here today. So we've been in boardrooms all over the world, literally, uh, from Germany to Puerto Rico to Canada to the U.S., everywhere. We've sat in boardrooms, we've met directly with CEOs and leadership groups within organizations, and we've spoken at tons of events um, around the globe where we've talked specifically about business growth. And we use different digital marketing tactics for business growth, but we don't actually consider ourselves a digital marketing company because it's not how we look at the world. We look at your company overall from soup to nuts. We, we find these specific holes and gaps and knobs that we can turn to increase leads for your sales team or increase the percentage of those leads that actually close using digital marketing tactics. And let me give you a couple of really quick examples. So YouTube, did you know that you can actually pick a specific YouTube channel or a specific YouTube video or you can target a specific individual who is on YouTube that you know is a potential buyer. And you can show your videos directly to those people. So if there's a video in your industry that is a good training resource, or it's about a topic, or it's a competitor's video, you can actually choose to have your advertising video run as a pre-roll before those videos. You can also upload an actual uh, contact to Google and say, hey, if that particular person is on YouTube watching videos, play my video first. It's an absolutely amazing technology that most people don't even know exists. You could actually, one more quick example, and this is just so exciting. We're gonna get into this, by the way, later on and teach you not exactly in the weeds how to do it, but how to do it from a high level, from, a, from an executive level so you can share it with your team. But you can actually, let's say you gave a proposal, your sales team sent a proposal to a potential customer. Using something called retargeting, you can actually have YouTube videos roll that say, hey, we're so glad that you have our proposal right now and we would love to meet with you about getting started on your project. Now that might be a little creepy to some, but it's possible. It's just amazing. Gmail, 50% of the web uses Gmail, either Google Apps or some kind of Gmail. You can actually have, <clears throat> have your message show up right in specific people's Gmail accounts based on keywords that are appearing within their Gmail or actual individuals that you upload. Display ads, you can run display ads on specific websites or on specific web pages around the internet that are about a very specific topic. It's absolutely amazing. On Facebook and LinkedIn, you can target to the most specific level. You can hit specific um, companies or individuals that have job titles or certain types of degrees at specific companies if you wanted to on LinkedIn. And on Facebook, you can target people so specifically down to this just minute level. And it's it's just, it's advertising on crack. And the problem is that so many people don't even understand how this all works. So we're gonna learn in this webinar, this training, how about 15 different companies are making millions of dollars in additional revenue using microsites. Now, this includes B2B companies that are you know selling to, to other businesses. This includes e-commerce. This includes B2C, people that are actually selling direct to consumer. And this is also definitely for lead generation, which is where I got my roots. Now, I wanna be really clear, this is for you if you're a CEO. This is for you if you're a business leader. This entire 
presentation is designed specifically for the leaders of organizations so that they can help their teams to more effectively do the tactics we're going to learn about in their actual business. So whether you're an actual business leader, a marketing team, or whatever, you've probably noticed that there's a bit of a communication gap. And here's how that works. The CEO or the CFO, they want to see ROI. They want real numbers. If you're in that position, you expect that when you spend $10,000 on a marketing campaign, that you have unequivocal proof that that $10,000 turned into $12,000, for example. You want to know that you have an absolute ROI on that spend. And there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't. Well, the challenge is that the marketing team, they'll often build Facebook campaigns or Twitter campaigns or SEO campaigns or traffic campaigns of some kind, and they get really excited about things like engagement. Engagement includes likes or other kinds of engagement like impressions and you know views of a video but here's the problem you can't deposit that stuff in the bank you can't go oh great my facebook post got a thousand impressions and 53 likes i can go and take that to the bank tomorrow and buy myself a car can't do it. So that's where the frustration comes in. So we're going to talk today specifically about kind of closing that communication gap. The reality is, excuse me while I take a drink, marketing should equal money. Any spend that you have on marketing should absolutely come back and put money in your bank account. The problem though, the reason that we've kind of gotten out of whack with this is because there's this chaos around this marketing stuff. Well, if you kind of look at it like it's communication channels instead of Facebook, Twitter, you know, MySpace, there's one for you, and look at it instead like these are each communication channels. Take a second to think about Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn uh, as three different buildings within a city. And inside of each of those buildings are actual uh, networking groups. There's events happening in each of these buildings that specifically have your audience, your potential buyer, your avatar. They're in there, they're talking and communicating with each other. And you have the ability to join in these conversations. You can come in and you can say, hi, we're gonna talk to you specifically about how to do that today and how your marketing teams can be empowered. Now, I wanna tell you a little bit about who I am, but I don't wanna bore you too much. This is my family. We're outside of the Google headquarters in this picture in California. Uh, we're nerds. We go on vacations where we actually travel around to different tech uh, events. We've seen uh, Zuck's uh, house that he <laughs> was so famously uh, living in when he built Facebook. And we've been outside of Steve Jobs' you know, property where he built Apple from scratch. And uh, you'll notice that uh, the boys look alike and so do the girls. Well, that's because I happen to have two sets of twins. And the questions that I always get when I tell people that I have two sets of twins, no, twins don't run in our family. Yes, they are identical. And no, we weren't on fertility medications of any kind. So those are the typical uh, questions that I always seem to get. So here's me and the boys. We're in the Dominican doing a water project. It's something that we're super passionate about. We work with humankind water and we go on these trips where we actually bring water into these different neighborhoods. And this is my daughter, Emily. She's an absolute marketing rock star. Uh, she apprenticed under me for years. And uh, now she actually works at Liberty University in Virginia on their marketing team. And and she loves every minute of it. Now that tall guy right there, that's actually one of my partners. Uh, his name's Josh and he's six foot seven. That's crazy. He's six foot seven and he's thin. I am five foot six and not so thin. So we always look kind of funny when we walk in a room and I always introduce him as my son. Uh, people seem to get a laugh out of that. This is my daughter Haley. She's actually in the Air Force. She's a special ops medic. And so we are really proud um, of our family um, and what we are doing there. So let's talk about the business side of things for a minute. So basically I got my start in real estate and this is important to understand because I didn't come out of school with a marketing degree that started pounding my chest and going into situations and acting like you know I actually knew how to run a business. We actually started by being self-employed and we won awards for sales growth. We spoke to national audiences and all kinds of just great, wonderful things. Uh, and we really grew 
our real estate business and we learned how to use technology to do it because in 2003 when we realized that we didn't actually want to cold call as much anymore which i'm going to share that whole story with you in a minute uh, we built this site now don't judge it i know it's ugly but it's pretty dated this site doesn't exist anymore but at the time it generated tons of leads for us and other real estate agents around the country. So many leads, in fact, that we actually had 60 employees and we won award, awards for Emerging Business of the Year, 40 Under 40, and a bunch of other uh, things as well. So we were really excited about how uh, that company grew. Now, the challenge was that in uh, 2007 and eight, while the company was growing drastically, the real estate market was actually starting to tank. So what we did, we pivoted our business into a marketing agency and we got clients like Hershey and Armstrong World Industries and I actually became um, a marketing thought leader of sorts. I was asked to come speak at events all over the country and uh, to share marketing and all of those things. And there's Seth Godin with me uh, in uh, 2008, I think 2009. Um, he's just a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant marketer. So we sold our interest in the agency in 2014. Excuse me. Um, I was actually asked to participate in some independent consulting projects that I thought would be fun, and they were. It was a really wonderful time, but the reality was that I just missed the agency world. So we launched Conklin Media, and we have been growing incredibly fast ever since. So let me share with you how this whole microsite thing actually came to be. I mentioned earlier that I was cold calling. So we had this blue phone book that was in the uh, the, the office uh, in the late 90s. And the blue phone book, you would open it to a zip code, and then you would go to a street, and then the street had all the house numbers listed. So you could actually find a street, and you could call every single home on the street from this phone book. Because remember, we didn't have the internet. So I drove around my area and I found all these really expensive houses. And those expensive houses, I knew that I would get a big commission on those. So I came back, I wrote down all the street names and the zip codes, and I opened up and I started calling. And my script every time was, hello there, my name is Dave Conklin, I work over uh, in uh, this area, and I'm just trying to grow my real estate business, so I'm calling some people today to see if they're looking to make a move in the next six months. So if you don't mind me asking, ma'am, are you thinking about making a move in the next six months? And I would shut my mouth. And about one out of every 200 calls, I would get a, you know what? We actually are thinking of making a move. And boom, I would set up a listing appointment. I would go out to the home and I would talk to them about uh, their move and provide them with a home evaluation. So this was amazing. I grew my business so quick, but I got frustrated because I didn't want to cold call anymore. Because here's what happened. You would cold call, cold call, cold call. And then boom, you couldn't cold call anymore because you had so much business that you had your, that that's what you're spending your time on. So my frustration at that moment was that I needed a website. And I thought if I built this snazzy website that I would be able to get all these calls just coming to me instead of me reaching out to them. So I learned how to build a website. The first website I ever built, there it is. That is one ugly website. Now, again, you have to understand this is before, you know, the world of WordPress and templates and um, all those things. So this was me just sitting down at photo with Photoshop and Dreamweaver and uh, just trying my best. But I learned something with this. I learned that if you just put a brochure on the Internet, people don't actually call you. They're not going to be calling. They're not going to be contacting you through the site. It's just information. So. I thought, what do these people want? What is my avatar, the, the people that want to sell their house? What do they want? Well, they want their home's value. So they wanted to know how much their house was worth so they'd be able to decide quickly what to do next, what kind of property that they should be looking at to move into. So what we did, and I'll never forget this, on New Year's Eve, we built the site I showed you earlier, GetMyHomesValue.com. Now, this is a more updated version of it on the right, but... <clears throat> we created what we call today a microsite. It's a site that was specifically focused on one avatar. Our avatar was the person who wants to sell their house in a specific area. Now, the challenge we had was 
that we were generating these leads now all over the internet or all over the uh, country. So we were getting leads coming in from Texas and Staten Island and all over the place. And we only had a real estate agent license in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So I couldn't do anything with those leads that came in. So I had to actually refer them out. Well, we ended up creating this business that grew, like I shared earlier, into a rather large, small business. So a properly designed and developed microsite will be your absolute best employee. Don't forget me saying that because I want you to consider this for a second. If you knew that you could hire somebody that would just generate you leads and calls, increase your branding and your credibility, what would you pay for a salary like that? In many cases, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in some industries. And what's beautiful about this microsite system that we do is it does that. It generates leads and calls. It increases your branding and your credibility. So what is a microsite really? Well, read this. This has to really sink in. A microsite is a collection of marketing tactics and content designed for a specific avatar. Now an avatar is a specific individual that has a very specific need. You may have products or services that are the same product and same service, but you have different avatars that purchase them for different reasons. And it's very important that you understand this because a microsite is not just a site focused on a specific product. It goes a step further. It's a site and content and marketing tactics that are specifically geared toward a very specific avatar. So here's what's cool. Today you're gonna learn how your organization can actually create and manage one of these microsites and start generating leads, leads, calls, and more revenue right now. So let's, uh, foundationally, this is a great worksheet provided by digitalmarketer.com. We love those guys. Uh, we train all of our team members through them and you wanna write that down actually because digitalmarketer.com is amazing. Uh, you know, you can go there and um, not learn this exact system, but you can learn all the little tactics that are in here. So, and then you can know that your team is actually trained well um, with it. But this is what the avatar stuff looks like, the questions that you kind of ask yourself. So you wanna look at specifically, what are the goals and values that your avatar has? What are their challenges and pain points? What are their objections? What's their role in the purchase process? And then the big part for me is this right here. What are the sources of information? Where are they going online? What websites, magazines, books, conferences, what gurus do they listen to? Um, that's really, really important to understand. And I wanna make sure I'm very clear on this avatar thing. A dad in Canada, for example, who's looking for a Ford truck is very different than a dad that's looking for a family sedan. They have different goals, different challenges, different problems. And with that said, what is your avatar. I'm going to start thinking about that. Now, Kuka Robotics had an avatar that they wanted to help. Uh, this is back in 2010. This is one of the um, coolest campaigns that we ever did related to microsites, but it's just a great illustration. So Kuka is a very successful company and they do trade shows and they had this revolutionary product that they wanted to launch where a robot arm, they, they developed these robot arms you see on the right, uh, that are in the BMW factories and things. And um, again, they're just a very successful robotic automation company. But they wanted to build a campaign out that would show how awesome this new robot was that had the software built into it. Because prior to that, that never happened. Now the challenge they had is that they had called other products in the past revolutionary and incredible and awesome. So what happened was when they wanted to call this one revolutionary, it was just gonna kind of be seen as the same old, same old. So what we did is we created this amazing campaign with this series of videos where uh, we, we went through and we actually built this, uh, this, this series of, of videos that looked like a robot kidnapped one of the executives at KUKA and the robot kind of had this person hostage and it was a really smart robot because now remember it had the software built in and the <clears throat> the video excuse me the video that we shot 
Um, like the first one would kind of blank out and it would fuzz out and go to snow and things and come back in. And um, we then emailed that and sent it through all of these different forums and generated tons of buzz around this whole campaign. And we would release video after video to this audience that was going to be at Pack Expo, the organization where they were. We have a testimonial from KUKA. This was one of their most successful campaigns that we have actually ever done. Um, is what their testimonial stated. And so that was one example. So they created a microsite around the idea of the people that were going to be going to Pack Expo because we wanted those people to understand that they could now get a robot that had the actual software built into it, which in that industry was huge. So here's another example. This is an executive recruiting firm on the left called End to Growth. And End to Growth wanted to create a opportunity uh, where they would generate traffic for the phrase top executive search firms. Now, what we did is we purchased a domain and we built some content and we actually created and rated top executive search firms all over the internet based on a specific list of criteria which we published on the site. And we published them and this site now ranks for top executive search firms. And the traffic that comes to this website, we have the opportunity to pixel that traffic and then to actually market to those individuals using tactics like remarketing. So we know that these people are interested in an executive search firm and they've now come to the site and we've been able to actually link them up with Enta Growth. And that's another example of a microsite. Yet another example is this company where we had a desire to market specifically to people who are CIOs at companies and CFOs that are spending a considerable amount of money on AWS. And we have this opportunity where they can come here and they can actually use a calculator or schedule a free cost assessment where they uh, link up with them and learn how they can save a ton of money. It's a very specific need, a very specific focus. Uh, here's another one where Law Valve of Texas, they have a lot of success. Uh, on the left is their normal site, the right's their microsite. Uh, they have a tremendous amount of success in, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> so sorry about the cough. They have a lot of success selling their uh, industrial valve service products on ship at shipping barge companies, but they wanted to break into the valve and the chemical uh, and oil refinery markets. So we created a site that's specifically focused on valve repair in the chemical plant and the oil refinery market. And we market that website through LinkedIn to companies at those places. So when people land on Houston Valve Repair, they feel at home. They feel like they're on a site that is specifically about their needs and desires. So here's another example of a microsite where this company wanted to kind of take their log cabin brand and remove it from the Woodtex umbrella. So Woodtex is actually the parent company, but they were able to create a new site specifically focused on log cabins. And because the website was so focused on log cabins, it actually was able to better rank in Google for many of those search terms. This is Garrity Glass. Garrity Glass uh, to this day is generating leads off of a website that we built specifically focused on sunroom quotes. Now the reason that we did it this way is because of the fact that Garrity doesn't feel like it's a sunroom company. It feels like it's a glass company. So by creating a separate microsite specifically geared to people getting a quote for a sunroom, we were able to generate a considerable amount of leads. This is another example with um, a site uh, on Amazon um, where there's a ton of memory cards being sold. We actually wanted to create an e-commerce platform because of the fact that we didn't want to be reliant completely on Amazon. So what we did is we created a bulk focused memory card site. So we noticed that there are a lot of people typing in wholesale memory cards and bulk memory cards. So we created a site specifically geared to that, build it out, and now today it has an incredible amount of revenue that has come into it um, based on this concept of building this microsite. So it's also important to note that microsites are for every single stage of the buying, upselling, and referral customer journey. Um, it's super important that you grasp that because I, I, 
moving someone through the process of purchasing and then referring and being excited about your brand is what this is all about. It's not just about the new sales. It's about increasing the percentage of sales that come from prospects and you know different things like that. So it's really, really important that you understand that. So let me explain pixels and cookies real quick because that's a really important part of this entire presentation. So basically, let's say that there's a potential client and they come and they visit your website. What happens is there's a pixel that can actually trigger a tracking cookie that's on your, your browser itself. And then when that visitor goes and visits other websites, they'll actually see your offer, your ad, and there's a lot of different things that we can do with that. Also, when they visit Facebook, they can see invitations to join your channel. And then if they come back to your website, they can actually see a specific offer based on where they were in the beginning when they visited your website. And then visitors that search for competitors and keywords will see your ad even more often around the web. So there's a lot of really great stuff. Now, if you're curious about the technicalities of this, uh, some people get confused as to what a pixel is versus a cookie. The bottom line is they communicate with each other. The pixel will grab information from the cookie and that's kind of how the whole thing works. So you can read into that if you want to. This is an actual live graph of, not live right now, excuse me, but this is an example of uh, some content that we have uh, where we're actually collecting cookies. <clears throat> now notice within here that we can also actually say, okay, like look down at the bottom here. You can see there's, in, during this particular reporting period, there's 202 people that added payment info, but only 97 people that actually completed the purchase. So we can go after and retarget people that have added payment information, but never made the purchase. So that's a pretty cool retargeting group right there. We can go after them with, hey, you know, you still have things in your cart, please come on back. You know, there's a lot we can do there. Um, this is just absolutely amazing stuff and I'm astonished on a regular basis how many people actually do not have this happening on their website. It's absolutely crazy. So let's dive in a little bit now to kind of a philosophy of thinking, a way that people used to do business and often do do business today. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details on this, but this is a really important thing to kind of understand with this microsite concept. So in most organizations, you have leadership and leadership is basically setting a direction by themselves in closed door meetings for the company. And they'll often pull in engineering. Now, by engineering, I mean, this is the people who are creating products, designing services, different things like that. They'll pull those individuals in and they say, here's what we want to build. And then they give that to the sales department and they say, hey, we want to sell this and here's how much of it we want to sell, so go sell it. So sales then goes and they talk to marketing and they're like, hey, we need your support, we need marketing collateral, we need all these things, you know, please go create this stuff for us and we're going to go to market with it. Then marketing will often go to tech and be like, hey, tech guys, um, we need this or that on the website, you know, can you fill us in? Yeah, sure. And then lastly, customer service, if there's something wrong with the products, they the one, they're the ones that get all of the feedback and negativity. Now the problem is that today, almost none of these departments communicate with each other and it's wrong because today, marketing and tech and sales are actually needing to be involved in the tech support. Tech support should be involved in the engineering of creating products because they get the feedback and they understand what's happening. The reality is that these tools like Facebook and LinkedIn and your website and all these places online and search engines, they are all places where there's going to be communication in every single step of the buying process. It doesn't work like this anymore, where you create a product, have a sales rep out selling it, and then marketing supports them, tech comes in only when they're needed, and then customer support has to deal with the, the crap that you know comes through from it. So I wanna challenge you and take you outside the box a little bit and think about this new way to do something. So it starts off with product and service design. You should actually, when you're developing new products and services, you should absolutely have leadership completely involved in that as well as engineering, marketing, sales, support, and tech. 
because those individuals, those leaders in those areas within your organization are going to have incredible feedback as to how the products and services should actually be designed. And then when you're in your awareness phase, which is where you're taking the products and services you've designed and you're actually spreading the word about them online, you've got to have marketing, sales, and tech all involved there because these are all things that they're, they're departments that can have great impact on how that's done today because it's not done the way that it used to be. It's not about a salesperson calling somebody at a company anymore. That's one small piece of how we communicate today. It's just a totally different ballgame. So then nurturing those people that have become aware. So think of it like dating. You know, you kind of, you, you design your life and your yourself in a certain way that you're prepared to go date and then you go out and you date people. You make them aware of you. Now the nurturing process is this dating process where you're actually getting to know people and marketing sales and tech again should be involved in that process because people don't get to know you only through interaction they get to know you through your content as well so someone sees a published guide that they just think is amazing that gets used all over in an industry and you're the ones that put together that guide boom that makes you a complete thought leader and it's really important to understand that so <clears throat> once we're nurturing people, now we get into the acquisition. So this is important as well because this is where, okay, let's get engaged. Like let's get married. Um, and you've nurtured people enough through your content and your marketing and your phone calls and different things and it's ready to actually make the decision to move. You need to have sales, marketing, support, and tech involved in there. Why support? Well, you have to have support involved there because they need to understand what's happening on the back end and they can also offer an absolutely incredible amount of input as to how to frame up the expectations of what that new client is going to have. And then we've got support. So support can be supported by engineering, marketing, and sales. And it's really important to have them involved in that process as well. So I hope that this kind of helps you to understand how we look at business and how these microsites actually play a part into each step of the journey, not just a website designed to get out there and have phone calls and leads coming in. It goes much further than that. So this is another document that was shared by uh, digitalmarketer.com. And uh, I'm sorry, it's a little blurry, but you know, basically, again, I just wanna reiterate, you know, so the awareness stage is where somebody actually goes and they see an ad, they hear about you through a referral, somehow they become aware of you for the first time. And then they go and they read a blog post. They engage on social media, they watch a video, something like that. They actually start to engage a little bit. And then they decide, okay, you know what? I'm gonna subscribe. I want this piece of content that they've created or I'm gonna go watch that webinar, you know, something like that. After that, that's when they schedule a demo or they make a small purchase. And when they do one of those things, they get really um, excited about the opportunity that exists of working with your company. And if they get value from that initial transaction, they're gonna be pumped. And then they're gonna purchase your poor offer, your core offer, not your poor offer, hopefully, your core offer, and then they're gonna upsell, upsell, upsell. And then they're gonna give you a testimony or a case study, and they're gonna tell their friends about how awesome you are. So that's kind of a typical process and journey that a real customer would go through from what we were talking about on this slide. So let's go into a kind of high level overview of an actual microsite example. So this is a live actual campaign that's on the web. And if you're seeing this, you're probably having a little bit of an anxiety attack right now if you're like the structured step-by-step -step list type person. So <clears throat> what I want you to do is kind of think about this in stages. Pretend that the only thing on here is this landing page in the middle, and then let's say AdWords, that's it. All this other stuff is gone. So. I'm gonna go through and we're gonna share a little bit about some of these different platforms that you're able to send traffic to landing pages with for your avatar. So this whole system here would have been set up for a specific avatar. And in this particular case, we were running say keywords. So AdWords allows you to do a bunch of things. Um, we're gonna get into that in just a minute. But the point is that, that we are sending this traffic into this page 
And if they don't, if they just leave, we have put a retargeting pixel on this screen. So now we're gonna be able to actually go out and retarget these people through ads, through all kinds of different you know, methods online, through YouTube videos and things. And, but that's the most important thing. Now, if our, our goal is achieved, then that means they have actually opted in and scheduled a calendar meeting with one of our sales reps. Now on this, we also have a trackable phone number and we can tell specifically which keyword someone entered in or from which website someone came from that actually turned into a phone call. And that's really important. We also have a chat box where uh, the, the operators can actually communicate with people that come to the website and they're able to communicate and generate a lead for our sales team that way. If they don't want to opt in and do a calendar invite yet, then they can download a brochure. And if they do, now we have their email and we're gonna send them a series of emails. So there's also Facebook retargeting where based on the specific website or web page, I should say, that they were on, we can retarget them with ads on Facebook. So between display ads, cold email marketing, Instagram, LinkedIn, affiliate marketing, guest posts, search, all these different methods go in and create this whole system to generate leads for your team for a specific avatar. So let's talk about Google ads for just a minute. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is display. Now, what this means is that you're able to actually run ads on almost 80% of the internet. And basically there's about 200 websites that have a 250 com score or better. <coughs> what that means is they get a ton of traffic and they have a ton of people on them. And you can actually run ads across those specific sites. You can run ads on web pages that only have specific keywords. You can run ads on websites only. You can test all of the traffic that comes to your site from these different websites to see specifically which ones are generating you leads and which ones are not. You can also do behavioral targeting. So you can say, okay, I only wanna target people who are currently in market for this specific product or service. And then you can do geographical targeting. We've actually, I had someone walk up to me at a speaking event the other day and they said, hey, we want to market to people that live within 10 miles on either side of a specific highway. Okay, great. We could actually create these radius blocks and create what's called a geofence up this highway. And the only people that would ever see the ads we were running are people that are within a 10 mile radius of these points that we created up along this highway. It was absolutely amazing. You can also target specific ages and genders based on the ads that you want. Now you can do all of that with text ads as well, but I wanna break it out a little bit more. So you can actually pick specific devices. You can do something called customer match, which is where you upload a list of your potential or current customers, and you create this, what's called a lookalike audience around that specific list. So you know that the people that you're targeting are buyers, they're specific individuals that have purchased or um, are thinking about purchasing or are very similar to those who have purchased or are thinking about purchasing. You can also pick specific topics, language, languages, you can pick specific placements. I mentioned devices uh, and you can do affinity as well. So you can say, okay, generally speaking, people that like Martha Stewart also like Good Housekeeping Magazine. So that's what an affinity is. You can pick different affinities and uh, you can just knock it out of the park. So that's the text side of things. YouTube, this is something nobody seems to understand. You can literally on YouTube target specific profiles, ad viewers, channel visitors, site visitors, engaged users, or previous buyers. You can go out and you can, excuse that noise. I think someone's vacuuming upstairs. You can actually go out and you can create these groups of people in YouTube that you target. You can target specific topics, keywords, search words, specific videos. You can target people that are in specific zip codes, specific languages, and specific devices. It's absolutely amazing what you can do with the targeting on YouTube. And YouTube is just getting more and more and more popular all the time.
Let's talk about Gmail. All of this, by the way, is powered through Google Ads. Most people look at Google Ads as just being text ads that show up when you do a search. And yeah, you can do that, but there's so, so, so much more. So inside of your Gmail account, you may not know this, but there's a sponsored and a promotions tab. And before you say, oh, I would never click that, or and I, I've heard it all, um, we have tremendous amounts of success with this. So you can actually have an ad that shows up inside of their actual Gmail account. And it can be very specific to what they're looking at, what information is in their email right now, what you can upload lists of people like that not necessarily gmail accounts it'll link it up automatically so you can say i only want to show these ads to these specific individuals it's absolutely amazing the targeting that you can do inside of these gmail accounts and then there's retargeting so this is an example of a retargeting list that's been built so you can see you know all emails so this is their customer list that they've uploaded and you can see there's about 180,000 that are known on the Google properties so retargeting you can do so much with it I, it would it would be an entire webinar just explaining the retargeting that can be done um, but these are the typical display ads so you know somebody who was on um, a website earlier and they're coming here you know they can now see an actual uh, you know ad from the place that they were on earlier and it's really cool. So let's talk about Facebook ads. So um, with Facebook ads, there's the obvious newsfeed ads. Now, these are the ads that when someone's on Facebook, they actually see an ad come up here or on mobile, it looks like this. <coughs> there's also Instagram. So Instagram is really popular today. And all of these retargeting options, by the way, you can show Instagram ads and Facebook ads just to people that have already been on your site, people that have been on specific pages of your website, um, all the people that have received a proposal that fired off a tracking pixel. Um, all of these different things can actually happen so that people are really, really um, seeing your brand constantly on the web that have uh, you know come come your way lead ads this is so cool you can run an ad on facebook you can do this on linkedin as well um, where you basically have an offer of some kind and you say hey subscribe or register or try it or check it out and when they do they click the button and it automatically tells you their name and their email address and then they can actually go and click submit now the thing is you can also add text messaging into here with along with a button that says yeah it's okay to text me so let's say you had a really cool webinar. You actually may have found out about this webinar through a system like this, where we have an ad that's, that's running. You say, yeah, I'd love to learn a little bit more about that concept. And then we say, hey, we have a five minute video that gives you a really fast rundown of what we're gonna talk about. Um, you know, So you can decide if you wanna do it or not. Would you like to get it in your text message? Sure. So you click submit, they get it in their text automatically. And then we then, after that, we say, hey, Another text goes out that says, hey, you know, hope you enjoyed the first video. Would you like to sign up for the actual webinar? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Click here. This is all chatbot stuff, things like that. It's absolutely amazing what's happening right now. So then there's LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn has something called lead ads. They have, um, whoops, going back here. They have feed ads. They have in-mail ads. Um, we're going to talk about some of those right now. But here's the powerful part about LinkedIn. Notice this retargeting audience. So in here, we have 67,000 LinkedIn folks, and we've basically said we wanna do the US, but exclude these states, and here's all of the different individuals that we actually want to go after. We wanna go after director of operations, senior director of operations, all these different things. And then we say, hey, we wanna see companies that are in these industries, so biotech, medical, hospital, health, that have at least uh, 50 employees, which you can see right here. <clears throat> so we built this audience specifically geared toward the people that we know will purchase from us. Now, in addition to this audience, you can also upload your potential customers list that you have, you know, and target those. There's a lot of different things that you can do here. And the ad that we then run looks something similar to this. So this is a campaign where uh, basically people see this information and then they can click here to get, you know, some kind of a 
uh, free, uh, you know, content or something. So LinkedIn is an absolutely amazing place uh, if you're in the B2B world, especially where you can go after some incredible people. So then let's talk about follow up automation. So this is really awesome. You may not know this, but you can actually do text automation, voicemail drops and emails. And one program that we use that we like a lot is actually called Follow Up Edge. And in here, I'm gonna play this for you in a minute, but basically when a lead comes in, you can automatically, five minutes later, however long you want, you can have a voicemail automatically drop. Let me play one for you. Hi, it's Dr. Sheila Doby from Your Caring Dentist. I got your request on Facebook on your needs for a consult to look into the possibility of Invisalign. So I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but basically five minutes after a lead is submitted, this automatically drops into their voicemail. Now after that, they get a text about 10 minutes later. So, and it fills in their information, and then they get an email. And then the next day, they get a text. The day after that, they get another voicemail that sounds a little bit different, and then an email. And this goes on and on and on. And <clears throat> this system of automation pushes people through the process in an automated fashion. So even if your sales reps drop the ball or out of town or whatever, they don't call, you wanna to call too in addition to this, but this fills in those gaps and makes sure that every lead is generated is effectively coming out the other end. So I wanna stop for a minute and kind of look at a real world example of a site that we have helped out. Now, basically this is an actual, real, step-by-step -step kind of process. And this is the system that was happening that this particular customer knew. What they knew is that if they went out and purchased a database and mailed about 7 million letters 15 days before this event would happen, they knew that they would have a certain number of prospects visit the page, but they had no idea how many. But what they did know is that about 52,000 people of these 7 million would actually show up at a workshop. And of the ones that showed up, about 85% of them, 44,000, would attend an interview. And then of the 44,000 that attended the interview, approximately 20,000 would end up closing and then approximately 75% of those would end up not canceling. So very long story short, this process basically meant that if they buy 7 million letters and send them out, that they're gonna generate approximately $10.2 million in revenue. Now, we did this really awesome thing with them where we, and we do this with companies all the time where we'll actually go to their business and sit down with them for a few days and specifically go over exactly what we would do if we ran their company. We, we dig in, we get dirty, it's really a lot of fun. So we did that with this organization and we expanded what happened between here, the 7 million letters being sent, and the 52,000 people showing up at a workshop. So we expanded that out into some steps and utilizing Google Tag Manager and some other tracking, we were able to create some percentages. So what we learned is that what's happening when those 7 million letters goes out is they're actually getting about 457,000 that are hitting their actual landing page, which is about six six and a half percent Then they're having about 61% of those that are actually going to this page 73% go here of those, 57% go here, 45 of those end up actually showing at the workshop. So now we know that we can make <coughs> some specific modifications in each of these steps, some knob turns, some lever pull pulls and pushes, and we can help to increase these percentages and affect the revenue in a positive way. So again, we're sending out 7 million letters. The, these are the numbers and how they kind of you know break out. And this number right here, 61%, we figured out a way while we're at that workshop to increase that to 71%. And here's what's crazy. That changes their revenue from 10.2 million to 11.9 million for this specific run. Think about how powerful that is for a moment. One test using Google Optimize or some other optimization software or, or uh, CRO stuff and we increase one thing by 10% and boom, it increases their revenue by millions of dollars potentially. It's absolutely amazing. So 
Here's a question though. When we're actually going through and we're pushing content at different stages in this buying process, when we're moving people from strangers to you know prospects and actually interacting with them, what kind of content do we want to push? I want to go over that for just a moment. So let's talk about strangers first off, people that don't even know you. So with strangers, you basically want to attract them using blog content, some premium content, some social publishing, and just some general ads. And then when we get to the prospect list, that's where we start to get into, okay, let's give them a checklist or a cheat sheet, an infographic or white paper, do a contest or do some kind of a course or a webinar, something that they're gonna be willing to provide their information in order to get back. Because we wanna make sure that we are building relationships with people and we're collecting information from them uh, when need be. So you can create toolkits, all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, when they actually are ready to close, that's where we start to do trials and demos and consultations and audits. So I'll give you an example. Some of you right now are probably going, holy crap, this is a ton of information. I just want Dave and his team to do this for me. And if that's the, the case, then feel free to reach out to us. And then what we'll do is schedule a consultation and you know we can talk about what that looks like and, and next steps. Um, some of you are never gonna do that. You would do this all yourself, all day long. You know, So wherever you're at, that's fine. But the reason we're creating this is because we wanna get information out there, show people that we're thought leaders, we know what we're doing, and give them examples on how they can actually grow. And we know that if we provide you with enough value that you're gonna come and you're gonna be like, hey, let's do something together. So once they actually become customers, now's where we wanna delight them. That's where we get surveys and referral programs and early releases and things like that involved. And then they obviously become promoters, which is really cool. So we've been talking about all kinds of different traffic opportunities to pull into your microsite or your website for that matter. Um, so it's all these different things that we showed you earlier. So, you know, pulling in AdWords and email and all this, but I wanna hit this little guy right here. And you're about to learn some really, really cool stuff. So let me find my slides again here and come back up to where we're at because we're gonna talk about SEO or search engine optimization in just a moment. So SEO is the art of ranking websites in the search engines. So. How is that actually done? Well, I'm gonna show you an actual example where we're gonna to go to Google and we're going to type in the phrase, click here. So I'm gonna exit out of the presentation for a minute and I'm actually just gonna show you. When we Google click here, there are 4.8 billion, that's a B, 4.8 billion search results that come up. Now what just happened here is we typed a query into Google the phrase click here went to Google servers. It went through its billions of websites and it returned a list and it said, hey, Dave, here are the top 10 absolute most important web pages on the internet about the phrase click here. Now remember, it's just looking at click here as a series of letters and a space. It's not actually looking at click here and understanding what it is. Although I know those of you that are search nerds, um, it is getting more intelligent. And yes, there's things like latent semantic indexing and all these things happening, but we don't want to get into all that today. The bottom line is it looked at this query and it said, here's the stuff you got to see. Now, the one I want you to notice that's on here is really wild. Um, there's the Adobe Reader, but there's also this PayPal page, which is right here. So the phrase click here isn't even on this page anywhere. So why on earth would Google feel that out of billions of web pages, why is this the number 12 most relevant page when it doesn't even have the phrase click here on it? That's crazy, right? The reason for that, and this is a light bulb for so many people, is that there are websites around the internet like this one right here, that say things like boom when will I get paid you'll need a PayPal account to be able to receive payments if you don't have one already click here to open one now and when I click that link guess where it goes to the PayPal button 
there are all these web pages all over the internet that have the phrase click here that is linking in to this specific web page. Google sees all those links from all over the internet just like this one. And I'm gonna actually turn that search off. So right here, just like this click here link. And therefore it goes, oh, <clears throat> this page must be about the phrase click here. Isn't that amazing? It is, it's absolutely amazing. So what you can do is, and you should do this, go to Ahrefs, this tool right here, and actually look at the links that are pointing into your website. Now earlier we used bulk memory cards as a specific example of uh, a site, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in some of our stuff. And I wanna show you just as an example, uh, one of the links that that particular site has. So here on technnotification.com, um, you'll notice that this web page right here has a link on it that says wholesale memory cards are the way to go. So if we go to this particular web page and we search for wholesale, boom, you can see right here that this phrase wholesale memory cards are the way to go. Now, wholesale memory cards, we have that in the anchor text. Now, there's specific ways to do this, but here's the bottom line of what I wanna make sure that I get through to you. When we click on this link, it's gonna to go to this website. So this is the site we, that's in question. And we've been doing a pretty good job since April with this, by the way. You'll notice we went from about 107 estimated traffic to over 1,000 in estimated traffic. And all these dots are algorithm updates. So we've been able to successfully beat the algorithm updates and build links in a way that it helps out quite a bit. Now under these keywords, if I do the word wholesale, uh, what we can actually see, and it looks like I'm not logged in, let me just log in real quick here. Hopefully that works. Nope, of course it wouldn't. Why would it work? That would be easy while I'm in the middle of this webinar. So when we go in here and we actually see the keywords that contain the word wholesale, you're gonna see there's quite a few of them here. And they are being pulled largely in combination by the links that point, like wholesale memory cards. Gee, I wonder if wholesale memory cards. Um, oh, look, wholesale memory cards bulk, wholesale memory. Look at this. Boom, number one, number two. There's a reason for that because we have links and we have relevant content that's good on the website. And that's the big point. So listen, when your team comes to you and they want to create content for you and your, and your company and they wanna spend money on getting other sites to reference and link to that content, approve the budget, approve the budget, but understand this is what it's for because when you go into this tool, you not only can look up specific um, web pages, but you can also type in specific keywords. So I can actually go here and type in the phrase memory cards, for example, and I can actually see what the volume is on certain keyword phrases. GameCube memory card, 6,600. I could write a content piece about nothing but GameCube memory, GameCube, excuse me, memory cards, and I would be exposed to about 6,000 searchers per month. This is amazing. Not only that, but look at this. I can also see other sites and the actual keyword phrases that they're, they're buying. So think about this for a minute. You can put your keyword, uh, your competitors in here, and you can see what keyword phrases they're purchasing and what ads they're running. It's absolutely crazy what you can do with this. So we can see specifically, you know, shop for desktops at Fry's. I can click on this. Here are all of the keyword phrases that they're purchasing currently and running this ad to. If we can see the ads a competitor is running, the keyword phrases they're bidding on, and the landing pages they're sending that traffic to, does that not give us an amazing clue into exactly what they're doing and what we can do as well? It's astonishing. Now, I wanna talk to you, we're gonna go back real quick to the presentation and SEM Rush, this tool that we've been using, is one absolutely amazing tool for sure. But in addition to that, there's two other tools. One of them is Google. 
it's over here. We're gonna get we're gonna save the best for last. So Google is an absolutely incredible tool for looking at where your site currently stands and like what kind of information Google actually has about you. You can go to Google and type in site colon, we're gonna use woodtext.com just as, as an example, and you can see specifically the pages that Google has, how many pages it has indexed, what the title tags are. So many times we do this and it's the same title tag on every single website. It's, it's crazy, it's just nuts. So what we want to do is make sure that the title tags that are here and the URLs and the meta description tags are very relevant to the specific content that's actually being created. Now, there's another thing that you can do um, with this as well. We can say, like a lot of people go, oh, well, I'm in the uh, manufacturing industry. I manufacture tables, uh, work, workshop tables. How am I going to possibly find a place to publish content on? Well, that's the magic. So you can type or have your team type in in URL colon blog. What this will show us are all the blogs that Google knows about 1.1 billion. Then we can go, OK, so uh, we want URLs that have blog in them. And then we want to do and let's do in text. Um, let's just say uh, table or let's say furniture furniture man and in text manufacturing so now what we have are 235,000 blogs that have the word furniture and the word manufacturing in them so if you're a manufacturer of tabletops you can reach out to furnituretoday.com forward slash blog and you can say, hey, I'd love to write a post for you guys. Would it be possible that I could write a post and you could publish it on the site? And within that post, you have a link, a backlink to your site that's specifically about the topic that you want to rank for. This is an absolute amazing thing to do. Now, there's sales involved here. It's really important that you understand as a business owner that you can't put anybody in this role because they'll fail. You have to have somebody who understands sales, who understands PR, and that can reach out to these companies and these websites and say, hey, we would love to get content put on your site. Can we write a guest post for you and get a link? And they need to understand how to handle objections and all those things to get those deals done. Or you'll end up spending a full-time salary and getting one link a month, which is not a good thing. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Really, really, really amazing tools. Now, one other thing I want to warn you about right now. Go here to Ahrefs and put in your website. And when you do, I want you to actually look at the broken backlinks. So the broken backlinks are huge. Now, remember, we showed earlier, it's so important to have uh, the actual um, links out there from other sites pointing to yours because that's what increases your rankings. Now, what you want to do, though, if you type in your address here and then click on broken on the left, you're going to find some. Now, typically what happens is a company will redesign a website and there'll be old URLs. So maybe their homepage used to be at forward slash index.html, but now it's just forward slash. There's no page, no index.html. Well, if you don't have a 301 redirect pointing forward slash index.html to the regular homepage, then you're going to lose the equity of that link. So, yeah, you have a link that points to you. You have your click here. But it when, you, when people click on it and go to it, when Google clicks on it and goes to it, it actually goes to a website, a web page that doesn't exist anymore. And that's a problem because it's not going to rank your website. We need to find a smaller site here let me look at wood text oh there they are so all these are not found so this paypal web apps mpp how paypal works this page doesn't work anymore so what's interesting is if this link right here how paypal works if they would fix that link and this is paypal we're talking about if we would fix that link, 
Oh, it looks like they did fix it now. And that would increase the rankings of PayPal. So it's so interesting to me how a lot of these uh, just sites that are redesigned in Google um, are redesigned, just don't have any 301 redirects put in place. And it's because the website designers, they're not SEO people. Like they don't understand. That's not their thing to do, so to speak. So they just don't know where to go with it. So Ahrefs, amazing tool. SEM Rush, absolutely phenomenal tool as well. Um, and these are the things that you can do. They're all about a hundred bucks a month. Um, not Google, obviously. So let's talk about tracking. This is where you have to track everything. So using Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, and some other things, you can track all kinds of stuff, but you can also track specific visitors that actually come to your website using a technology called Hotjar. Now there's some other technologies out there as well, but what Hotjar does is it actually records real visits to your website. So watch this. This is an actual visitor on the site. We see where they're reading, what information they're digging into. And then what this does is it will actually go through and it will create a heat map of all the visitors that come to a landing page. Now the reason this is important is because if we're sending traffic to a specific landing page, we want to make sure we understand what they're looking at and what's being effective, what's not being effective. You can do things like switch out button colors and all this different stuff and actually have uh, an actual record of the performance increases. That's how you increase by 10% and affect your revenue by $1.7 million. There's just huge opportunities that are out there that most companies aren't even thinking about taking advantage of. So then there's CallRail. CallRail is really cool because it will track and or record phone calls and it'll indicate what keyword was searched for. The actual source of that traffic, all those different things. So you can make sure that you know without a doubt that CallRail or that a phone call came from an actual lead. So it's just an amazing, amazing tool. DigitalMarketer.com, a lot of people ask me like, how do we get this work done? Well, there's a couple of options. If you want to actually train people on your team, you can go to digitalmarketer.com and you can go through a specific uh, you know, uh, training module and learn how to do specific things that are in here. And if you have your team do it, they can actually present certificates to you that show that they did the work and they did it well. There's also something called Upwork. Upwork is really great because you can go to Upwork.com and you can enter some information about successes that freelancers have had in the past and you can get some really great vendors or some great individuals who actually know how to do specific things. Generally speaking, we haven't had a whole lot of success with full-time individuals. It tends to be a more project-based project or small hourly thing that we have done really well, but you want to make sure you're giving very clear guidance and that you're saying exactly what you want done and always, always, always give them a test project before you do anything else. And I just want to show you some of the powerful stuff that you can do with Upwork. So let's say we wanted to get a landing page done in the insurance market. So we can go to Upwork. I'm just going to log into my account real quick. Maybe I'm not. <clears throat> yes, I am. So um, if I wanted to find freelancers that had built landing pages in the construction industry, I can type landing pages construction. And you can see there's a ton of people here, pages of them that have experience with that. But then I want to make sure I filter for only 90% and up job success. And I'd like to see people that have earned more than $10,000 on the platform because then I know they had a chance to screw this up. Um, so I want to see that and then I want people that are native English speaking individuals and you can see here's where we've kind of gotten it down. So these are specific folks that within their content somewhere um, within these pages have indicated that they've done landing pages in the construction industry. Let's say you need someone that knows PHP as well. You can type in PHP. 
and boom, now we're, we're getting slim pickings now, we're down to 16, but these are people that know PHP, that have done landing pages, and that have done so in the construction industry. So <clears throat> you can then create a job listing on here and then click to invite all of these people to their job, to your job, and then you can actually create conversations that way and get people uh, rocking and rolling. So Upwork, again, an absolutely amazing resource and uh, you should definitely check it out and give somebody a test project. So this is an example of tracking. So you can see, we can actually see revenue, transactions, conversion rates, all this stuff directly from the specific locations that traffic is coming from over here. And then you can also see specific keyword phrases that people had entered in and exactly what their revenues uh, are from it as well as their independent individual ad spend. So here's the deal. We're done. I hope you've learned a ton of stuff. There's a couple of things you can do from here. You can either just go and uh, you know share this information with people in your company and uh, hopefully it'll help you to grow your business in just incredible ways. If it does, please let me know. Email me dave at conklinmedia.com or hello at conklinmedia.com because I'd love to hear about any success stories you've had from the information that you've learned within this uh, video. So the other thing you can do is you can reach out. If you have questions, feel free to let us know. Um, you can sign up for a GSS, a growth strategy session, where we actually will go over specific things with you on the phone that we might be able to do uh, in kind of an hour-long phone call. You can also sign up. We do these on-site conferences at companies all the time where two members of our team go out and basically we sit with you for a couple of days, get a tour, understand what your business is all about, and we actually create a marketing strategy document for you that you can integrate and implement on your own, or you can hire a vendor, or you can hire us to do it. So that's a, another common thing. And if you're ready to just get started and you wanna start doing some of this stuff, then just let us know that as well. And uh, we'll be sure to get in contact with you get something on the books and uh, get started because this is quite a really amazing um, opportunity for so many different businesses that we've helped through the years. So I'm so grateful again, you've hung out until the end. Uh, congratulations on that. And uh, I'm so excited just to get started with you. So feel free to reach out and you have an absolutely phenomenal day. More webinars to come your way soon. This is Dave Conklin, and I'm out.